Hi guys, in this video I'm going to show you how you can spend three days in Busan. Busan is the second largest city in Korea and there is a ton of stuff to do there as well as eat. This is how my family and I chose to spend our time there. Day 1. Go to Gamcheon Culture Village. This is my number one thing to do in Busan just because it's so pretty. Gamcheon Culture Village is a former slum that was converted into an art village in 2009. It was a haven for Korean War refugees because Busan was one of the few places not held by the North during the Korean War. And as a result, refugees poured into Busan and many people settled here when the main parts of the city like Chalgachi became overcrowded. Then, in 2009, the Ministry of Culture, Sports, and Tourism launched a project to renovate Gamcheon. It was called Dreaming of Busan Machu Picchu. The government hired artists to paint murals and create art installations, and the residents initially rejected the project and didn't like it because tourists were taking photos of them, and they felt that their homes were really modest and they didn't really want to show them off. But gradually they came to accept the changes. Gamchun has now been featured in a number of Korean dramas and TV shows, and it's a hot spot for tourists. If you take a look at it, you can see why. To get here, you have to take subway line 1 to Tosong Station and then from there take bus number 2 or 22. We went on a weekday and it was extremely crowded so I can only imagine how crowded the weekends are. You can watch a full vlog of my trip to Gamcheon Culture Village on my vlog channel. Day 2. Visit the local markets. Chaogachi Market in Nampodong is one of Korea's largest seafood markets and it runs alongside the Busan Harbor. The market really established itself during the Korean War and it's run by these tough women called Chaogachi Ajumas. They do all the dirty work of cleaning and preparing the seafood and have a really tough exterior. If you walk through the market, you can tell how hard they work. They really hustle and call out to you to buy their products. The western part of the market is dedicated to selling live seafood which is caught fresh and sold directly to consumers. And you can watch as the fish gets scaled, beheaded, chopped up, and dumped in a box of ice. The eastern part of the market is dedicated to dried seafood and also there are many restaurants that line the side of the market. You can get a meal for about 5,000 Korean won per person which will consist of fried fish that is likely no longer fresh enough to sell anymore or you can pay a little more for things like live octopus, fresh abalone, sea, cu sea cucumber and other delicacies. Adjacent to Chagachi Market, there's a building where if you go to the top floor, you can get a really nice view of Busan Harbor and take some cute photos. Near Jogachi, you'll find Gukje Market. Gukje means international in Korean, and following the Korean War, refugees who fled to Busan set up stalls in order to make a living, and this was the beginning of Gukje Market. Gukje Market is one of Korea's largest markets, and its alleyways connect to smaller markets such as Bupyeong Market and Kangtong Market, but it's really hard to tell where one market begins and the other one ends. You can look up to see the signs, but it really just kind of blends into one place. If you're a foodie, this is a really great place to try some of the foods that are unique to Busan like Siat Hotto, Busan's famous fish cakes, and pork belly kimbap. The market sells everything from kimchi to clothes to suitcases to electronics items and home appliances. And it can be really overwhelming, but it's also really interesting. I definitely recommend walking through it. Haeundae Beach is the most famous beach in Busan. It has white sand and shallow water, which makes it a very popular place to visit in the summer. I've heard that although it's a public beach, hotels will put up umbrellas and beach mats and actually rent out the spaces to people during the summer. Apparently, it gets really crowded during peak summer season, which is the last week of July to the first week of August, so it's probably best to go during the off season. When we went in March, the beach was completely empty. Tongveksom Island, or Camilla Island, is an island located off of Haeundae Beach. Although sediment has now connected the island to the mainland, it's still called an island. We went here and I thought it was really beautiful. It's just a really nice, calm, peaceful place to go for a walk. And you can see the Camilla flowers blooming from winter to spring. They're really pretty. Mm -hmm. Just down the shore from Haeundae Beach, you'll find Gwangali Beach, which is its less glamorous cousin. However, this beach has a better view of the bridge and is supposed to be really pretty at nighttime. Okay, now some practical stuff for those of you who are thinking of visiting Busan. Number one, getting around. So in terms of getting around, when we visited Busan, we used the subway system and the booty bus to get around. The booty bus is the Busan City Tour Bus and it can take you to all the major sites in Busan. It's a double-decker bus and some of them have open tops and some don't. 
There are four different lines and you can go all over Busan for a fixed price, getting on and off where you please. I believe that three of the lines are included in um, one fixed price and then the, the fourth line, the green line, um, is extra. So the price for a ticket is 15,000 Korean won per person for adults and 8,000 for children four and up. And that's a one day pass and it's unlimited. So it's really, I think an economical way to get around Busan. You can also get a discount on the tickets if you take the KTX. Because we took the KTX to Busan from Seoul, we opted to stay at a hotel near Busan station so that we didn't have to lug our luggage too far. We didn't want to take a taxi because of the car seat issue, which is basically we try not to take taxis whenever possible because it's not really safe for the kids since they're not in car seats. Um, there are a ton of hotels in the area, but we decided to stay at this place called the Lee Idea Hotel. It wasn't that fancy, but it seemed relatively clean and it did the job, and it was less than $100 per night, which is a steal. When deciding where to stay, we were basically deciding between staying near Busan Station or staying at Heyunde Beach. And we thought that Heyunde would be really nice because the kids could play in the sand and we could be right next to our hotel so they could clean up when we needed to. But ultimately, we decided to stay near Busan Station because number one, it was close to the KTX. Number two, it was close to the booty bus stop, which we planned on using. And number three, it was close to the local markets, which we knew we wanted to visit. Busan Station is also closer to Kamchong Culture Village than Heyunde Beach. The beach is really nice, but we didn't plan on spending a ton of time there playing in the sand. To be quite honest, if you're from a place that has really nice beaches, you probably won't be too impressed by the Busan beaches. We figured if we wanted to book a beach trip, we would do it at another time. Uh, this trip was mostly just to get a nice overview of Busan, go to the markets, and do some of those touristy things that we wanted to do. There are tons of other things to do in Busan, but we were only there for three days and two nights. I feel like we got a good variety of things in there and I don't really feel like we missed anything big or I don't feel the need to go back. When you're taking the KTX, which is the Korean equivalent of the bullet train to Busan from Seoul, you can save money by buying a Korail pass. We traveled with a group of three adults, so the pass was 102,000 Korean won per person compared to the round trip ticket price of 120 to 160,000 Korean won. The Korail pass is available to foreigners who are visiting Korea and it's a pretty economical way to get around. The train leaves from Yongsan Station in Seoul and it takes about two and a half to three hours to get there. Also, if you check the budget airlines like Pusan Air or Jeju Air, you may be able to get an even cheaper price than what you would pay on the KTX. I think I've seen flights for as low as 29,000 won each way. So maybe you can get a ticket for a round trip ticket for about 60 bucks. Overall, I really loved Pusan. I liked it a lot better than Seoul, actually. I feel that Pusan is to LA as Seoul is to New York. So it's a lot more laid back and relaxed and it's near the beach and it just has a really nice vibe to it. I also enjoyed hearing the Busan dialect, which is really different from the Korean that you hear in Seoul as well as in the United States. Um, so if you speak Korean or understand Korean, then you might find this very interesting. Culturally, I thought that Busan was a really interesting place. It seems to have been shaped a lot by the Korean War. I'm gonna be also doing a Busan food guide because I found that a lot of the things that we ate in Busan were really different from the kind of Korean food that you will find in Seoul. So if you are a foodie and you like trying new things, then you definitely want to check out that video. So anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this video and found it helpful. Leave me a comment and let me know if you would like to visit Busan sometime. And if you want to see a full vlog of my trip, I put one up on my vlog channel, so I will leave the link in the description box. I'll talk to you next time. Bye!